Hello and welcome back to everyone's favorite student-produced live late-night show, Newman Night Live. As always, I'm not the show host you want, but the show host you need. Mike Chevarelli here alongside Aaron Martz, the always entertaining Aaron Martz, uh, who we'll catch up with a little later on. And, of course, happy Ash Wednesday to my fellow Catholics out there. I'm representing with my ashes right now. And a happy Valentine's Day to all of you couples out there. And you know what's kind of ironic? The season of Lent, which is celebrated by giving up something, and the day of love, which is Valentine's Day, happen on the same exact day. I think there's something to be said about that. Also, for all of my gentlemen out there being forced to celebrate with your bae, uh, God bless your freaking soul and your freaking wallet, first off, and make sure she finishes every last bite of that lobster dinner. But in all seriousness, Valentine's Day is a truly coveted day by millions. And people celebrate it in many different ways, which includes ways that are not necessarily valued in the Franciscan tradition uh, here at Newman. Uh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Regardless, everyone has the perfect idea on how Valentine's Day should be. But we all know that it doesn't always happen that way. I know we have all had a terrible experience with a date uh, somewhere down the road. Uh, so I wanted to bring in someone to talk about these experiences of Valentine's Day. So we decided to bring in show executive and our advisor, Sean McDonald, who has been with his wife for 14 years, to give us his recommendations on the perfect Valentine's Day. Sean, welcome to Newman Night Live. Thanks, Mike, for having me on the show. I normally like to be behind the scenes, but when it comes to this type of material, I have to chime in. Now, my wife and I are really good at relationships, and we're pretty good at Valentine's Day. Not really. Uh, case in point, I'm here with you on a Wednesday night at 6 o'clock in the afternoon instead of being out with her. But I digress. For 14 years, Janine and I have been together, seven years married. I remember my anniversary, step one. And I've learned a lot. And I thought I'd share some wisdom for all of you and your, uh, your viewers about what to do to not bomb your Valentine's Day. So this is a top 10 list, basically, of how not to screw up your Valentine's Day. Number 10, order yourself a heart-shaped pizza. Number nine, order Grubhub, put it on fancy china, and pretend that you spent all day cooking it. Number eight, wear stain-proof or waterproof shirts to ensure that even the biggest of klutzes can play off a huge mess. Perfect. Number seven, group on a couple's massage, but show up only by yourself and get the extra time for yourself. Number six, have four presents ready, one ideal gift and three backups. Who doesn't love a giant teddy bear, a necklace, a dozen roses, and a ring from a grocery store quarter machine? Number five, order yourself an edible arrangement or roses. Number four, eat a bunch of chocolate-covered strawberries. Number three, actually make that chocolate cover everything. Number two, Make a card for yourself, telling yourself just how much you love you. And the number one way to not bomb Valentine's Day, be single. Zero people to disappoint. Back to you, Mike. Yeah, I think out of all of those, I think staying single is the best option, Sean. I, can, I completely agree with you. Uh, but why don't we go over to say hi to Aaron over in entertainment. Hi, Aaron. There are reboots and revivals being made like it's Hollywood's job right now. From Fuller House to Girl Meets World to Will and Grace, people are anticipating what it's going to come next. And for some, the wait is over for Roseanne fans. After announcing that the iconic sitcom starring Roseanne Barr and John Goodman was coming back, it had fans questioning what the storyline would be. Now, if you watch the series, then you know that John Goodman's character, Dan, dies at the end. But Goodman will be coming back for the revival, and fans will be told what had happened during the first couple episodes. Roseanne returns Tuesday, March 27th at 8 p.m. on ABC. And I don't know about you, but I was a huge Seinfeld fan. So, could fans be in for a reunion soon? Well, after being asked by Ellen DeGeneres this week, Jerry Seinfeld gave fans a hopeful answer. Take a look. All these, these sitcoms are having a resurgence. So, Roseanne is doing it. I mm -hmm. heard Murphy Brown. Is that really true? Murphy Brown's doing it? Um, so Murphy Br and, and, and Candace Bergen is coming back. Yes. Yes. See. And I, I think I know where you're going with yeah, this. Yeah, I think you well, do. Why don't you finish it? Well, <laughs> 
Do you think, Jerry, <laughs> there would be a possibility that the Seinfeld it's, would come back? It's possible. <laughs> Fingers crossed there's some kind of reunion for the group pretty soon. Until then, you can catch Seinfeld's current show, Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee, now on Netflix. Well, that's all I have in the spotlight for entertainment today. I'm Erin Marks for Newman Night Live. Thank you, weather, for fluctuating between winter and spring, and thereby having my mood fluctuate between angry and happy. Thank you, fancy Valentine's Day dinner served in school cafeterias, for making my Valentine's Day dinner even more pitiful. Thank you professors who would just like to remind the class that these weeks are going to fly by and we really need to get started on our final projects. For reminding me that these weeks are going to fly by and I really need to get started on planning my summer vacation. Thank you, cold and flu season, for being the legitimate reason some of the kids are missing from class and the illegitimate reason that random kids in class say they didn't do their homework. Cheers. And thank you. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Florida Man. All the crazy articles from the Panhandle State. Here we go. Number one, Aaron, right. you ready? Yes. A Florida man was caught with a full rack of ribs in his pants trying to steal it from a grocery store. I mean, he must have been going to like a movie theater and taking in, sneaking in snacks to a whole new yes. level. Like, oh, I don't want the gummies today. No, 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 let's do the ribs. Let's get the whole rack of ribs. Yeah. That's actually genius. Yeah. But you know what? Like, yeah. the weird thing is, like, I just feel like people from Florida just love shoving things down their pants. Remember the, yeah. the, the, the chainsaw? The, yeah. The chain, a guy a few it weeks ago. It's a go-to. Yeah. Oh, no. No book bag. Nothing else. No. no. Let me just shove it down Let my pants. Let me just shove a whole chainsaw down my pants. Yeah. Why do people love shoving things down their pants in Florida? It's a Florida thing. I don't get it. Let's look at the video. Check this out. Yeah. It's crazy. I catch. I don't care what you are. This is about third or fourth time you've done this to me. You should be going to jail. I don't care. I'm sorry, man. I got kids with me, too. Give me that crap now. So uh, that, that was really strange, but so weird. next article, a Florida man unplugs a bounce house at a birthday party with kids still inside. I mean, okay, yes, this can happen anywhere, but I just feel like in Florida that this is like a daily occurrence. Yeah. Like people are like, oh man, Tom's at it again with his bounce house. He, he right. deflated it again. Right, yeah, like it's I feel like it's just like, ah, oh, it's just another day in the life of, of in of Florida. Florida man. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, like this can happen anywhere, but like, in Florida, it's just, it's normal. It's normal, yeah. right, right. But yeah. this guy, he claims he had a concrete reason for doing this. So apparently, the 70 year old man uh, didn't like the music that was being played at the party. So he figured, oh, well, might as well shut it off. Go, goes over to the DJ speaker and what he thinks is the DJ speaker and unplugs it. Turns out, it's the wrong chord and the party's over basically. Yeah, that's just one deflated way to the whole party. That's one way to deflate a party. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. And he's booked on it, which is even more funny. Yeah. But All last right, article we have, uh, a Florida man steals 36,000 pounds of Crisco. All right, so this man must have been from Philly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No doubt. He's coming mind. back up from Florida, and he's like, you know, the Eagles won the Super Bowl. Let me buy all of this Crisco in the polls. 
Yeah, he's right? definitely a die. He's he definitely a die-hard Eagles fan. Yeah. He has to be. And if, yeah. if that's the case, I feel like this isn't a crime. It no, just can't not, be a crime. a crime. He's a modern-day Robin Hood. Philly. Yes. Yeah, you know, but, stealing. Wait, not from Philly. Never mind. He is from Florida, which oh, this not? makes it a crime. Oh. Yeah. No, that's a crime. Oh. Oh, so. Oh, he's, he's going not, away for a long time. Oh, okay. Not from Philly. He's not from Philly, so, and he was stealing. Oh, okay. Never mind. Well, uh, he's not. Well, that's all we have for Florida Man. Uh, again, don't be like any of these people from the Panhandle no. State. <laughs> And that's all we have for tonight's show, and we, yes. we hope you really enjoyed it. Yeah, make sure to check out our previous episodes on our YouTube channel, Newman Night Live, and be sure to subscribe, like, and share below. Have a good night, everyone. Have a great night. <laughs>